Good morning, everyone. Thanks for gathering here today. Uh, I'm going to talk about my thesis work titled A Co-Training Approach for Multi-View Power Iteration Clustering. And uh, I would like to introduce to my committee members, Dr. Amit Shea, who is my advisor, and Dr. K.K. Shen, and Brad, who is from WSRA. So, uh, here is a one famous book, uh, New York Times bestseller, uh, the book titled The Wisdom of Crowd, written by James. So there is a sentence in it that says a diverse collection of in independently deciding individuals is likely to make certain types of decisions and predictions better than individuals or even experts. So to put it in a simple way, a diverse group of individuals are more likely to come up with more better discussions than the experts. So this is a pictorial representation of what the sentence says. So if you consider a diverse group, so they, I mean, they come up with a better discussions than a similar group, I mean, or least diverse group or a single expert. So now the question is, how do I form this diverse crowd? And if, uh, is one diverse crowd better than the other diverse crowd? By the way, uh, you guys know that I, uh, you know, encourage you to listen to podcasts, right? So there is a po podcast, um, uh, from NPR and the uh, motto for that podcast is, uh, podcast is all of us are smarter than one of us uh, and, and it has a wonderful piece of uh, thing just like the hidden brain and those you know that podcast it has a wonderful set of you know, discussions on this you know, area. Is that a series or is it? It's a series. Yeah, yeah. So now uh, addressing these questions how do we form a diverse crowd? In order to uh, answer that, we know that diversity can be based on various measures. For example, consider the diversity related to the mentioning of or uh, related to the interest of a team that mentioned by the users. So, I have considered an example here where um, the six users are involved in soccer related discussions where the user 1 and user 2 are uh, talking about the same team uh, that is real Madrid. And user 3 and user 4 are talking about a team called Manchester United. And user 4 and user 6 are talking about uh, Arsenal. So now, uh, if I form a group here, uh, user 1 and user 2 are similar to each other. So they belong to one group, one cluster. So from when I have these kind of clusters, then I can form a diverse group easily by considering one user from each group. So this is how I form a diverse crowd. And the least diverse crowd is the is the users from the same group or same cluster. So now, given the diversity measure, interest in soccer team, how uh, how do you so now I addressed how I form the least diverse and uh, and diverse crowd. So there can be multiple uh, diversity measures that we want to consider. For example. Uh, it might be so soccer related discussions about the teams and players. In the previous example, I have considered only one view or one dimensional representation or one interest that is team. But here I consider two interests that is the user interested in team and the user that is interested in players. So if I consider this particular example, user 1, user 2, user 3 and user 4, they are talking about user 1 and 2 are discussing about the same team, but they are just talking about different players. Whereas user 1 and user 4 talking about the same players and different teams. So, how do I consider this multiple views? So, and do these multiple views, team and players, help to form a smarter crowd when compared with a single view? This is the first question. And the second question is, can we find a large data set uh, to evaluate this uh, hypothesis? And the third one is, can uh, social media provide such large data sets? So, in order to address the question 2 and 3, can social media provide such large data sets? Yes, we can find this kind of data sets with multiple views. So I consider fantasy premium league uh, domain where the tweets, I, I, con I consider the discussions related to the team and discussions related to the player by some set of users. So I found this data set and uh, for addressing the first question, do multiple views form the smarter crowd? So for that, uh, in order to experiment with different combinations, we I proposed a framework to experiment with different views, that is players and team. So now uh, experimental evolution now also had showed that experimental evolutions of uh, 
wisdom of crowd data set and i will show it in further slides so as i mentioned uh, this problem can be solved using clustering this slide is a brief overview of uh, clustering so what is a clustering process of dividing data into possible subsets where each subset has similar users by considering some similarity measures so the key factors in the clustering are the most common uh, way of clustering is by considering the feature vector or so feature vector is nothing but a team uh, that we considered as one view right so and player is another feature vector so once we have this feature vectors we can use any similarity uh, measures to get the uh, affinity matrix so i uh, example euclidean's distance and cosine similarity and gaussian similarity so these are the similarity <coughs> measures that you can uh, compute their similarity between the users and third one is uh, the al clustering algorithms are assessed uh, by two uh, main categories one is the time complexity and the other one is the clustering quality so coming back to the uh, diverse crowd modeling diverse crowd cluster users uh, i'm planning to cluster users based on the multiple views so one might be a players view and the other one is the team view so this is a classical multi view clustering problem and uh, there is uh, if you consider this particular view here uh, it's an n by n matrix which says there are n users and a12 defines the affinity between the user 1 and user 2 by discuss by considering the discussions of the team and uh, similarly user uh, in this affinity matrix i'm i'm taking b12 as an uh, affinity between the user 1 and user 2 by considering the tweets about the players so now uh, the naive approach concatenates this multiple views into single view but then when we are doing this uh, when we are concatenating two multiple views we are not considering the statistical properties of this particular view and that particular view so in order to so in order to address that uh, address this kind of issues multi view clustering has broadly classified into three categories one is a subspace method the other one is a multiple kernel learning and the third one is co training so going in more details of subspace method uh, in this approach we are trying to obtain low dimensional subspace from the given spaces so for example in the uh, in the example that we considered a space is x1 can be a team and uh, with the multiple di mul here there are seven dimensions so they can be seven teams and similarly in here uh, you can consider uh, players where uh, there are six players i'm right? uh, six players right so <coughs> six dimensions are the players so now we are co combining them and trying to consider one low dimensional space subspace which is three dimensions here and then you are what uh, is six here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay. and 1 2 3 4 5 So now we are coming with low-dimensional subspace. Since the information exchange happens at very beginning level, that's at the future level, the merging does not incorporate graph structure for multiple views. So, and when coming can to you, this, can you can you explain through an example in your domain of team or? Yeah. So now, uh, as I said, there are six, seven play, seven teams and six players. Now they are coming, trying to come up with some low-dimensional. Uh, three dimensional subspace which has the information of both the uh, team and the players and wherein they are doing some uh, dimensionality reduction which has an possible information loss so that's the reason that i am not considering this approach for my uh, for developing my algorithm uh, uh, so uh, is the dimensionality reduction uh, applied separately to um the first space and the second space or okay, they combine are, prior to the the reduction but when i combine this to form this low dimensional thing so here is where that happens okay so the second one is multiple kernel learning in here we have different kernels or different similarity measures where we don't know which measure is actually best fit for uh, getting the clustering results so you we use multiple kernels in order to uh, give uh, some more information to form the cluster so once you have this unified kernel you perform the clustering technique on this so in the it does not exchange the clustering information at uh, the cluster level whereas it, the information exchange happens at the view level so when coming to the third part in this we are trying to, uh, third approach we, in this we are trying to get the agreement between the clusters and uh, between the clusters across all the views 
in here if I consider two uh, views or two kernels then I perform a clustering technique on this and form the cluster and then once I have the clustering result I exchange the information or I, I, I use that information in order to update my view in code training approach so I do it iteratively till they get some agreements so can you explain both more intuitively for this audience exactly what that exchanging information for cluster right that so I have a couple of examples that how the code training actually updates this views I can I can explain when I show that okay so now here is one of the best uh, one of the best and prominent work that's been done in year 2011 a, a code training approach for multi-view spectral clustering in here they are integrating two uh, approaches <coughs> two best approaches to be uh, so the one is code training uh, since out of this three code training is uh, actually has a, a information exchange at cluster level and the spectral clustering so spectral clustering algorithm uh, handles both irregular shapes and uh, also good for graphs so so I have uh, what do you mean by oh, cluster shape okay. yeah and why is in, in, intuitively how that cluster shape is related to your example let's say of team all right I, I, uh, <coughs> So if you consider this particular example, the data can always be linear data or non-linear data. If, if there is data like this when, and you perform a k-min clustering or different clustering algorithms and in the k-min you will select a centroid over here and here, example, and then you merge this. So then this half part is like one cluster and this one is one cluster. So, so these kind of algorithms are not good for uh, non-linear uh, non uh, graphs. So and spectral clustering perform well on this kind of graphs so we uh, we consider this particular approach i mean we, we and whereas the existing algorithms will perf i mean well not good not perform well on this kind of graphs so coming back here right so this spectral clustering algorithm handle uh, i mean they use a spectral embedding so i will i will explain what the spectral embedding is in the next four slides and uh, the main drawbacks is uh, they are not able to get the agreement between the views, so a clustering agreement, and uh, the time complexity it is big of n cube because they are using the top k eigenvectors in order to compute the clusters. So uh, I mentioned that the main drawback of the existing approach is a clustering agreement. So what does it mean by clustering agreement? For example, if I considered five nodes, data nodes, or five users, and I, I constructed three different views by using three different similarity measures, and then each view is nothing but my uh, five by five affinity matrix, which shows the similarity between one node and the other node. So now I have five, uh, three similarity matrix, so each one is one view, and you can perform any approach, <coughs> any kind of uh, co-training clustering approach, then you will be resulting three different clustering results. Let's say the clustering results of view one is one three five in one cluster and two four in the other cluster, and in view two one four five in one cluster and two three in another cluster, and in view three two four five in one cluster and one three in another cluster. So if you see the results, one three five belongs to one group in the first one, but whereas one and three belongs to different here, and one and five belongs to different here. And if if you are if we are the end user, we don't know which one we have to choose until and unless we have the cluster labels already defined. So this approach, uh, the existing approach, is getting some kind of results like this, where uh, there is no clustering agreement between all these views. No, because the views are different. This is a natural thing. Right. For example, let's say. Uh, uh, I mean, I can consider one example uh, where uh, whereas we, I mean, we we took three members. So we clustered them in the first view, like one, one and two has been clustered in one view. But in the second view, uh, I mean, two and three has been clustered in one place. So in finally, which one will you consider? Considering so this depending two on views. the view, right? If, if depending on what criteria you choose as a similarity, the views. So you wanted will be to different and clusters will be different. So what I want you to tell me is why are you looking for unified cluster in this context? Uh, Okay, so so if you are going for social data and uh, if you wanted to cluster all the uh, users or uh, all the users using similar different attributes, so you wanted to form some diverse, uh, if you wanted to form some groups there, then you have to con include all the multiple uh, view properties, right? 
Yeah, I, I understand your original uh, idea, which is diverse groups are better than uh, very narrow uh, right, right. groups. So, so that I understand. And then I understand even this is correct. Right. So I don't know how the two uh, so, combine. So this, this one will form a cluster. So this particular thing, multi-view clustering, when I consider two or three properties and I form a cluster. And then from that clusters, I will form a diverse group. So in order to form the diverse group, I need a cluster or users of same attributes or users which are similar. So so in order to form the diverse group, I need this uh, So I clusters. think the, uh, the idea here is uh, uh, you don't know which view is the best. Right. So then, uh, the, then you try to find the agreement, the consensus between the, the the basic idea is that consensus yeah, view is better than any. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm, I'm on this one. Just to recap, a view is a similarity kernel or is a specific dimension, for example, the team of a data set? So, yeah, that's a good question. So, team is an, sim uh, view is an uh, basically similarity matrix, which actually shows that uh, two users are similar by this person or Two users are similar if you take scale from zero to one so that i mean zero right i get that but like it's like there's like are you saying a view is a different similarity kernel like like for example l2 versus l infinity like different different measures of distance or different similarity kernels or are they different dimensions of the data set they are different dimensions of the data set okay. uh, uh, I, okay. I would say it's both because when you have different dimensions, for example, you would not compare different layers or different users using that layer names in the same way that you do for that team names. So for one, yeah. uh, you may need to do something different. So it's mm -hmm. different dimension, and for that dimension, you have different similarity matrix. I see. Based on the characteristic of the view, like let's say we are comparing two teams versus we are comparing two exactly. layers. So that, that, that's that's your job as an end user, that how you want to define it. Yeah. So right. framework so has flexibility to change the similarity measures? Um, framework, so basically, once you come up with those similarity measures, then you can use this. This framework. Yeah. Yeah. So this, there's something more you know here is uh, because you don't know which set of features to, to use, yes. and which similarity measure to use. And even you don't know which classroom algorithm is the best. Right. So, so here the, the idea is that you generate a different set of results, then try to find the agreement. In, right. in the real world, you often have some, some prior knowledge or some intuition about which feature actually mm -hmm. is the yeah. most relevant. Yeah. And you would want that feature to dominate in the iterative process mm -hmm. where you're right. exchanging information. Is it trivial to implement that, that no, kind no, no. of weighting? Or? We, we have that kind of uh, okay. parameters that can be, uh, we can set. For example, out of the three views, if you consider one view as the most important thing, okay. then you can actually give a value uh, that scales from zero to one, so that uh, if you give 0 0.9 for this <coughs> and 0 0.5 for the rest of the two views, then you can get, you can give values for the view which is more important for you. Uh, okay, um, so another question I have, so we're talking a lot about fantasy sports, but right. I mean, Clustering approaches are ubiquitous. Um, and what other domains are there um, where it's been demonstrated that this iterative co-training approach outperforms like a, a kind of generic approach where you might just uh, create a large concatenated feature vector and then just do like a k-means clustering based on that? Um, <laughs> like, is there are there other domains where this is shown to produce a cluster structure that? Is better or more useful than the leading brand approaches? So, right. Uh, I mean, so I just wanted to make sure whether your question is this. So, are you saying that uh, what are the other domains that where you can apply this particular technique or? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Or where this technique has been shown has to be been better. applied already. Uh, okay, so this technique has been applied more on image processing actually. Yeah. yeah so, right. I mean, they wanted to cluster uh, some, for example, traffic related. So they wanted to cluster all the photos of traffic and see at what times they have traffic. And uh, where the cluster of another shows there is less traffic and there is an average traffic. So this is one kind of example. So they also have an uh, finding some uh, thief or something like this by using facial recognition, you cluster them. I, I mean, you have a photo, but, uh, that's a photo is right. not clear, so you can find identify the image of that person. 
use that image and find the cluster which are similar and then again the fingerprints you can use it as a second view and you can get a small cluster and then you can you are narrow downing the set okay. of people. So you answer my question. So right. image processing is yep. one example. Just as an aside, I think um, it would be very interesting to conduct some cognitive science experiments and see if this approach actually provides a better fit to how humans naturally do clustering. Um, right. So Anyway. So, so if, if you have something like this, it, uh, where uh, the clustering results are not agreed, then it's hard for an end, end user to select one of the clustering results. But whereas if you have some result like this, whereas one, three, five is, uh, are clustered together in all the three views, then a user can easily select one of the result and use that result as, an, uh, as a cluster for them. I think uh, that uh, I think we need to, uh, it'll be good to Hear more about what you were just saying. I think if uh, that kind of experiments can be devised and done, yeah. uh, it would be a good complement to what what uh, you know possible paper from this. So right. let's, let's talk about that. I can consider it as a future. Sure. Okay. So now the thesis motivation is I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm trying I'm trying to propose or I'm trying to build a technique uh, where uh, I, where we share. I mean where the where I cluster the data point that share similar attributes by considering the multiple views, like for example, the team and the view, and uh, to achieve the maximum clustering agreement, uh, so between across all the views. So I I can't say I got an absolute because uh, I don't have a math mathematical proof for it, but I have performed this on uh, multiple data sets and I got an 100% agreement between all the clusters. So, and then uh, efficient and scalable approach. Uh, so specifically, we approach this. Uh, we approach this problem with these two broad ideas: that is scalability, and the other one is convergence. So the uh, so now uh, the basic idea is uh, even the existing approaches use an update method to update their views iteratively. But in their approach, they are <coughs> using spectral embedding uh, instead of uh, using the, uh, the cluster labels. So that's uh, one of the problem one of the drawback of their approach, but I will explain in yeah, details. Okay, explain me a little bit more. What do you mean by using cluster label? Yes, so uh, I have it in the next four slides uh, after this, uh, but yeah, I, I will explain sure. I will, I will make sure that I will deliver that. So then the additional advantage is we use a uh, power iteration clustering uh, algorithm, which is more efficient and uh, which, which can be applied uh, as a replace of spectral, uh, as a replace of spectral embedding. So, so this is an, a little bit background of the power iteration clustering that I'm using. So it's a simple iterative method to find the dominant eigenvector where spectral embedding will uh, find and top k eigenvectors. And this dominant eigenvector is kind of a linear combination of the spectral uh, eigenvectors. So, so the v t is uh, we do it iteratively. So t is nothing but number of iterations. So if you consider t as one, v two is equal to c w v one. So c two is uh, v two is an eigenvector that I computed at uh, second iteration. So we do this uh, until some error rate that we define for power iteration, and we stop the uh, algorithm when it it reaches that uh, error. So here is an existing approach. Example: there are n views. For simplicity, let's take let's consider two views. That is, a team view and player view. Uh, a one is a team view and a two is a player view, and it is an n by n similarity matrix. Uh, both the views, and then we perform spectral clustering on this particular views to generate the uh, eigenvectors or spectral embeddings. That is, e one dash for a uh, view one and e two dash for view two, and then uh, we do this iteratively because their algorithm don't have any uh, stopping method or stopping condition. For example, uh, when it reaches this particular point, let's stop. So there is no uh, stopping condition for their approach where they do it iteratively to five or 10 iterations. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of confused on how you get from view to IN similarity. <coughs> is that, do you, normalize, do you normalize the distances in the unit, the unit interval and then combine them? So are you asking about A1 and E1 dash or are you asking about only A1? A1 to spectrum. A1 through A sub n to spectral. How okay, so it's it's A1 is a similarity matrix. So if, if you remember yeah. in the first slide, I showed a matrix yeah, which yeah. has n by n, right? Mm -hmm. So basically that n by n are users. So it's A1 is an, is an n by n matrix where n is an user yeah. and 
and it defines the affinity between two users. So that particular matrix defines the affinity for a specific dimension, right? For so specific so dimension. So then that how do you combine a say a one and a two? How do you combine those into a single? Oh, okay. So a one is is in one view. It's a team view, and in a one there are n users, and that. No, we don't. No way. Oh, yeah. combination happens at the cluster no, so, level. So that e, E1 prime that you said, right? That right. is eigenvector ah, for yeah. A1. For A1, yes. And yes. then E2 is independently for A2. A2, right. And so you're going to start, feed, you, you take that E1 and then feed it to A2 and then find the right. other one and you so, go through iteratively like that. So ah. they do this for a number of iterations. They update this view. They update in such a way. So wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, okay. so normal so theory says. Right that if you want to find a principal eigenvector, there is an iterative method. Or, uh, okay. Right? Yeah, good. So, so that's a well-known result. Right. So what you're telling me now is that you want to find an eigenvector that sort of works well for all the one through n approximately. They won't be identical. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you're trying to kind of push it through all these mat matrices one after the other and and get some kind of a consensus Con where it won't satisfy any one of them properly, but will sort of work uh, overall. I mean, is that yes, work? yes. So that's what they propose. So this is their existing approach. So that is what they propose. So A1 is, uh, so E1 dash is an A1's eigenvector and E2 dash is A2's eigenvector. Okay. And then they use this E2 dash to feed it for A1. So basically what E1 dash represents is the spectral, uh, I mean, it represents the clustering information, but not the clustering labels. Yeah, I think, see, the, the, the thing that confused people is because of the way you put that green box in between. So that is an algorithm that they, they are using in order to generate this result, that spectral embeddings or eigenvectors. No, but if A1 completely determines E1, yeah, then you should, should be combining them. Uh, right, I should have yeah. given a line from A1 to E1. Yeah. yeah so. So they update their views. Uh, so I will explain uh, how. So I will explain how they are updating their views in the next slide. So once they are done with the ten iterations, they perform a k-means clustering on this particular eigenvalues or uh, eigenvectors to form the cluster. So they form these clusters, but the problem is these clusters doesn't have any consensus. So they are, I mean, they lack in the clustering consensus. So in this slide, I'm. Uh, Okay. In this slide, I'm planning to say how the uh, clustering embedding or update view works. So, do you mind if I go there? And... So, right. So, if there are, uh, here, there are two views. You can consider this as a team view, and this is considered as a player's view. And A12 is a similarity between user 1 and user 2 in only team view. And B12 is a similarity in player's view. So, once they have this, they use the spectral clustering algorithm. They run this. Uh, they give this as an input to generate the spectral clustering, and they uh, get their eigenvalues or eigenvectors. You can say. So if if you want to generate k clusters or three, cl let's say if you wanted to construct three clusters, then you will be having n by three matrix. Now if you wanted to have a k cluster, so it's uh, they will generate top k eigenvector. So this one is one eigenvector. This one is the another eigenvector. So this one is the other. So these are the top k eigenvectors. So this is uh, what the spectral clustering results are. And once you, so in here they multiply this uh, this with their transpose in order to form the n by n matrix. And this actually has the clustering information. So clustering information in the sense, uh, if you run any k-mean kind of algorithm on this, you will have you will get the cluster labels. So you got this right. So this cluster labels represent uh, which cluster the user belongs to. So in this example, the spectral embeddings has a value associated with the vertex, which can represent the cluster affiliation. However, they are not the absolute. These are the absolute cluster labels. So however, they are not the cluster labels. But what they are trying to do is they are trying to use this spectral embedding in order to update their view for the second iteration. And they are using this particular values in order to update their uh, next, uh, I mean, you view one uh, matrix. The problem is whenever you generate a, uh, eigenvectors, there is a more high probability that you will be getting an uh, positive and negative values, and you will be having very less probability that gets zero in this eigenvectors. 
so when you add when you multiply this night negative values to update your views so your edge weight actually becomes negative which makes uh, which doesn't make much sense so if you consider this particular example here i have a so here i have an uh, five users a b c d e and here are the similarities between those users and i use spectral clustering in order to cluster them and in similarly in the team you have five users with their uh, f, uh, affinities between them and i can use spectral clustering uh, to cluster them in the first iteration what happens is they use the spectral embedding of this particular graph to update their views so that adds an edge with negative value sometimes and if you observe here they also add an edge between p and e uh, with some value even though there is a no edge in players view and team view here there is no edge between e and d and here there is no edge between d and e and also they belongs to different cluster even then this particular approach is adding an edge between them giving some values so similarly in uh, for team view these are the edges that's been added and you can also see the edge between a and b here in the team view before there is no edge but now there is an edge even though they belongs to different cluster and because of this problem it's hard to get the convergence and they converge very slowly and uh, they can't if you do a spectral clustering again they are not able to reach the consensus this cluster says a c e belongs to one and this cluster says a c d belongs to one if i so this is what it proposed uh, so what i proposed so i have an affinity matrix of uh, our views a1 and view a2 and then i use power iteration clustering to generate one dominant eigenvector that is e1 and then i pro, uh, then i do a k min clustering algorithm on them to get the cluster labels once i get this cluster label i so here is what i'm uh, i'm doing so if i wanted to have a 100% achievement between the clusters my epsilon uh, my e is uh, 100 uh, so this is the clustering agreement so basically this represent the clustering once i achieve my uh, 100% clustering agreement then i will stop this process but if i don't achieve that i will do this iteratively till i get that agreements so i will update my view in this way i will explain uh, how i am updating in the next slide uh, once i have uh, once i achieve that agreement i will terminate the process and you can pick any one of this results if it is 100% you can pick any of one of this result because all the results will be the same but if it is 95 or 90% you can select one and randomly <coughs> so this is how i am updating the views so similarly uh, as i said before i have two uh, two f two views with their affinities uh, one is the player team view and the players view and now i'm running the power iteration clustering which results me in one dominant eigen vector and this eigen vector i use a k min clustering on it to get the cluster labels when i once i get the cluster labels i'm trying i'm trying to construct an n by n matrix which actually says 1 3 4 1 3 4 belongs to one cluster so this basically ones there will be only ones and zeros so i'm adding some uh, kind uh, i'm multiplying this with some alpha parameter so the arts for you, for answering your question if you wanted to give high priority for this your alpha will be high for this and uh, your beta will be less so i'm uh, i'm adding this values to the uh, update my views so that results me in this kind of results so if i did the power iteration clustering on this and this so now in iteration 1 when i get add this clustering results and some parameter by considering by giving the alpha some value now you will be adding the new edges like this if you see this particular this graph there is no edge that been added between a e and d so because that's because here e and d there is no edge and here in e and d there is no edge but also that they belongs to different cluster that's the reason i'm not not adding any edge but if you consider this particular uh, edge a and d in this graph in the first iteration there is no edge between a and d but in this second graph there is an edge with some value and also they belongs to the same cluster so i'm i'm propagating this uh, value to this graph now i have achieved the uh, convergence you can see the a and c belongs to the same cluster across both the views so all the views converge into one so that means my results will basically the same for all the cluster all the views and hence we are able to achieve the convergence uh, 
and uh, st- we are working on theoretical analysis and it's still going on and uh, for in this approach we don't need an, uh, multiple eigen vectors in order to update our view whereas in spectral embedding they use the top k eigen vectors to update their views so i'm just using one eigen vector in order to update so and okay, okay. let me ask you a, a, okay. a basic question i have just one view all right does all this uh, boil down to what uh, lsa does uh I would say LSA is one of the subspace based approach what he presented. There. See, because if I, if I understand right, right, you are somehow doing dimension reduction by spectral thing, right? Yes. Right. So, rated thematic indexing, what does it do? It basically cuts it into those three matrices and then uh, throws away the eigenvectors for lower eigenvalue. And right. it gives you smaller number of dimensions. Right. And then you can use those latent dimensions to do your clustering, clustering. and right. all kinds of stuff. So does single dimension, uh, single view case, does it boil down to LSA and ease with the generalization of multiple views? So, so as far as I know, this is the generalization of the multiple views. Um, because I'm, all this extra links that you're saying, right? they will show up in the LSA context where in the original space you could not immediately see the connection between words <coughs> but in the latent space related words will show up nicely, related documents will show right. up nicely and so lots of things that you told me to me make me recall all the stuff that goes on in the LSA thing so it is, it is important for us to try to understand the connections well because otherwise you will be completely <coughs> So, in the LSA, would you be able to incorporate both the player and team view in those in, in that? No, but I want to understand whether the no, we won't be. So okay. I, that's what I'm saying. It's a generalization of that. But I want to know first whether is, is that correct? Because then I can follow the logic and and see. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know why would you call generalization. It's different. It's just not you know. No, for multiple, multiple views, multiple they are trying to combine because here there are lots of places where I'm not I'm I'm, I'm unclear what's going on. But at least if it is, uh, if one view means that, at least I have a good grounding to start with. Well, if you have one view, how would you bring in this one of this cluster into the, you know, No, because he's dropping iteration. all, no, he's dropping many dimensions, right? He's taking only the top K, which is exactly what LSA does. Huh, on a single one dimension it does, but yeah. here you have to bring in thing from multiple views into the next iteration, right? Right. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that I understand the current approach necessarily, but at least I know where to start and, and how to build if, if what I claim is uh, correct for, to begin with. Hmm. So usually what happens is those kind of combinations, they happen according to some objective function that you want to optimize. And or, or if I put it in different words, it, it happens according to different condition. Here, the condition that we are following is... No, LSA condition is the take... See, basically what, what is the problem? The problem is that when you take distinct words, right? Even though the words look different, they are semantically not distinct. And so the latent semantic indexing, what it does is, it uses the document to actually glean similarities between words. And when you pick the, the, the some k number of uh, fixed dimensions for reduction, right? What we're seeing is that we're ignoring noi- noises and now you have a better representation of the meaning of the documents and the terms. And the latent space allows you to compare both documents and terms. So, so that the, um, I would say the reduction that happens. Right. Um, here, if you, um, in spectral clustering what happens is mm-hmm. that reduction happens according to the objective function that is so it it happens to be that that objective function gets you somewhere where you need, just need to find the eigenvectors but it is defined such that you reduce the number of links in between clusters so so the point is um, here we are proposing that i mean he's proposing that um, the co-training approaches mm-hmm. which samples um, d- 
different views that should happen according to clusters, especially when you are doing this kind of, of co-training approach for clustering. So, so, so that's right. what. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand. Yes. I, I abstractly that you're trying to kind of straddle multiple yeah. uh, similar, similarity measures, and, somehow. and specifically based on the cluster labels. Right, and I can kind of yeah. finesse saying that iterative scheme. Yeah, it is. It is. Done, it, it is kind of same. Okay. It's just that the way it happens is okay. different. So. Thanks. Um, So, so this is all about uh, I mean, how do I how do I come up with one cluster when there are multiple views? It's not about how I'm uh, reducing the dimensionalities uh, to get one. I mean, so okay. So one thing I wanted to mention here is the proposed uh, approach can I mean so my updation view is the main contribution and this proposed approach. I'm using power iteration clustering because it's fast and scalable. And you can replace this power iteration clustering algorithm with any existing uh, clustering algorithm. Uh, and it works uh, on all the existing clustering algorithms. So we use power iteration clustering only because it's fast and scalable. I think I addressed that question so far. Uh, so advantages, uh, I think I already gave this. So, yeah, coming to the experimental evaluations, I uh, have two sets of experiment. One, uh, study the convergence and clustering quality with the data sets used by the previous papers or previous works. Uh, and then applying this uh, particular technique uh, to, uh, to study the effect of diversified users in wisdom of crowd application. So coming to the first one, uh, I have uh, considered two data sets, synthetic data set and uh, synthetic graph data set and the Twitter UK politic data sets. So in synthetic uh, data set, I have almost three uh, have three views. Where did you get it from? So the existing approach paper they have it's published the results. Yeah, published. That, yeah. Right. So and then the Twitter, Twitter UK politics data set it has uh, two hundred nodes with uh, seven views in it. Uh, these are the view names, and um, both of these have the clustering labels so that we can uh, we can compare our results by using normalized mutual information to evaluate the consistency between the labels and the clusters. So now coming to the uh, uh, the results, the synthetic data set. This is the graph uh, uh, with iterations on x-axis and normalized mutual information, NMI on the y-axis. So if you observe this uh, first graph, it, the, the results or the graph, the or the views have uh, ended up with different clustering results. One has achieved 0 0.98 NMI, and the others are somewhere around 0 0.8. I thought you were going to show the color, you know. Legend, what each color. So sets these on. are the views. So I am not showing. So okay, they, they are three different the views. That's it. So, so in in whereas in my uh, approach, I have converged at the fourth iteration, and I ended up with having zero point nine five NMI. So here is an uh, table. This is this table has been. Uh, I mean, I use this table from their work. So they have computed this uh, F score, precision recall, and NMI. Uh, so this is the. Uh, difference that we got. So they have achieved 0 0.98 for this particular data set, whereas I achieved 0 0.95 NMI. And here's a uh, graph representation uh, st with standard deviation and mean. So if you see this, the existing approach has a mean of 0 0.9 for 85 NMI and I have got 0 0.95 because all the three views ended up with 0 0.95. And the standard uh, deviation is 0 for me and whereas they have 0 0.18. Yeah, higher average NMI. So, and for the second data set, uh, this here are the number of iterations. So I have performed this for eight iterations. So generally they do this for ten iterations, but I have kept the graph for eight iterations because I am able to converge at seven. So I have so even this the views or the this results they are actually random. So they are they are not converged. If it is like this, it's converged. But if you can see some views where it's are more uh, going up and down. So. Right, so even if, I, uh, if we consider there are for some particular views where we started at very low NMI, but we are able to converge to get somewhere around 0 0.98, 
wherein they converged and they got something around 0.5. Why don't you put on the slide what each of the lines stands for? This line stuff, Yeah. So basically, these are the seven views. So right. That so yeah, but somebody just looks at it, uh, you know, online doesn't understand right. it. Okay. So you, you need to put the legend. Legend, right? Okay. So again, this is the uh, table of representation <coughs> with uh, the anions, the HO zero point seven six and have HO zero point nine eight, and uh, you can see our approach has uh, performed well uh, when you see the graph of mean and standard deviation. Where I have zero uh, standard deviation, they have somewhere around zero point one eight six. Now, uh, coming to the background of so the point here is that the overall takeaway is that on average you do better, you do more consistently, right? Um, and you know, the, on exceptions, they there are exceptions that they do better, all right? Because uh, right, so th that thing to be noticed here is so they give zero point nine eight NMI that they published the result as 0 0.98 NMI for synthetic data. Yeah. So in here, they published that result. So out of all the 10 iteration, in third iteration, fourth iteration, they got 0 0.98 NMI. So they, they mentioned that we have achieved this uh, convergence or this result 0 0.98 for this few in this number of iteration. But in, if you go for real-time social data sets where you don't know the cluster labels, you don't know which clustering result is the best. That's important. How did you demonstrate that that is you do better, you know, that you don't have that problem? Just by showing your standard deviation not being yes. So th this actually explains uh, this this graph basically explains that part. Yeah, okay, that should be done. But I thought that the, another argument you had was that you do this more efficiently. Right. So, so where is so, that argument? So the main contribution is the way that we are updating views and the way we are converging. So, and the, another thing is the power iteration clustering can be replaced by any other uh, existing clustering techniques. Mm. So they can also use this update view method with spectral clustering. So, so for that reason, I didn't include, I mean, I didn't include the efficiency, but uh, I mean, actually you gave the comments, but uh, I don't have time to work on it. I'm so sorry for that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So coming to the uh, coming back to the wisdom of crowd application, here is the background details about the uh, wisdom of crowd. But but you you be done you have that in your thesis, right? Yeah, in the thesis uh, uh, yeah draft I will I will I will have I will be having that. <coughs> so here what I wanted to form is uh, I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to form a diverse and non-diverse crowds. So we have considered this FPL uh, fantasy premium league domain. So wherein uh, each user will be given initial set of points. And using that points, user can select the players or the team uh, players, and uh, also the captain. So one of the player will be a captain, and uh, each player consistently gets a score depending upon uh, their performance in a match or a game. And uh, users are motivated to predict the best performance player uh, so that they can get more points. And captain receives uh, if they select a captain, and if that captain performs well, so uh, they will get twice as many points uh, as than a normal player. So when you say initial, each user will be given an initial set of points. Yes, points. The, the right word. So you get you get some play money basically, and you use that to purchase players. So right, it's like right. you got salary caps. Um, so it's right. just like the real world. So I just don't want to people to get confused. We use the word points. And, and those bullets so, versus... I thought yeah. if I mentioned money, it was just so okay. different, so I just okay. mentioned it as point. But yeah, anyway, I'll yeah. Just, uh, just, yeah, I think you should put parenthesis and explain it. Really. Uh, okay. Yeah. Make it real. I mean, as it is, it is real. It is real, right? And make it real. Why don't you, why do you make it... So if I say that money, they will think that they might, it's a real money and um, so that's the no, reason I put No, it, you can say, uh, you know, uh, play money. Uh, okay. Use the word play money. I just want to distinguish that from the points that points. you earn yeah. if your team does well. That's a totally different thing. Thank you. So uh, here is the data set that I have got. Uh, the publicly available judgment data and fantasy premium league. Whereas I have 2 million tweets. And uh, these 2 million tweets are by set of users. That is 1,282 users. And we also uh, got the uh, player's picks. I mean, what the particular player user has. I mean... For example, if I am the user and if I have tweeted at some one thing, so we crawl uh, the information from FPL domain that what players he actually picked in that particular weeks. So, so this game has been uh, 
performed in 25 weeks so we got the 25 me uh, 25 weeks peak data and then uh, here is the example for one particular uh, uh, user for example Fabian he has a uh, ts number of tweets that he mentioned in twitter and uh, I, I also got the and uh, also got the captain picks that he he took in for 25 weeks and uh, we got the captain scores of uh, I mean, what is an average cap? Uh, what is a captain score over the, all the twenty-five weeks? For example, in week one, it's five point zero, and in week two, it's four point zero. So now I have is uh, tweets of set of users about the soccer player and the soccer teams. So I use this. So it's actually view. Sorry. So we have defined the diversity along the two views. Uh, one is the soccer players, and uh, I mean the mentioning about the soccer player, and another is the mentioning about the soccer teams. So these are the keywords that we used uh, in Twitter in Twitter to get the tweets and uh, Messi, Ronaldo and uh, for the teams it's Liverpool. So now uh, what we did is uh, we have the data set where you, uh, where you is an user with S number of tweets and then we have uh, similarly we have for 1287 users, 82 users and now we divided the uh, tweets about, uh, by the mentioning of the players and mentioning of the teams and there might be some tweets where uh, it has both players in the team so so the t1 has t2 has been there in both the views but whereas t1 is there uh, only player so because that tweet, particular tweet has only players information player mention so now using this uh, we use a cosine similarity measure in order to come up with the affinity matrix and now we have two affinity matrix then i performed uh, clustering algorithm my our proposed technique to form these groups so now after forming the group what uh, how did we generate a diverse and non diverse crowd so here we considered k clusters so for example you can say k as 7 8 9 10 and then uh, we uh, we form a diverse crowd by considering each user from each cluster so if k is 7 uh, there are seven clusters so i considered randomly one user from each cluster and I formed the diverse crowd. And similarly, I formed the non-diverse crowd by considering the seven users or K users from the same cluster. Now, I generated 5,000 random unique groups of different size, size in the sense uh, of the cluster size for each category. Now, I have evaluated the wisdom of score. Uh, so this is the formula that how I evaluated. So this actually explains uh, the mod of CI is, uh, is nothing but the, for example, if you consider a group of seven, and uh, I mean, you consider a diverse group of seven. So I have for each user in that part in the first week, I have seen what captain he has picked. So I, in the entire group, if one captain has been uh, like four times or five times, so I considered the captain who has been mentioned more times, and I took the uh, average of I mean, I took the captain score of captain score for one week. Similarly, I did the same for twenty five weeks, and I took the average. So that is the wisdom score of that particular group. So now uh, when I go to the graph, so here these are the single view representations, player view and team view. So the blue line represents the diverse group. So when I consider only the player's view, uh, I form a clusters and then I form the diverse group from those clusters and non-diverse group. And after computing the wisdom score, that is, uh, I mean, the graph looks like this, which where you don't get anything from this particular graph. Similarly for the team view, but when I consider both together, that is multi-view, uh, multi I mean team view and players view, when I consider both, so that is called multi-view, and then I form the diverse crowd from them and non-diverse crowd from them. And if you see the uh, scores, so on the x-axis you can see the group size. As I said, in the clusters I have considered 7, right? So I consider from 7 to 18, so there are 7, 8 clusters, and then the second time I considered 9 clusters, and then 10, so on. I considered 18 clusters, and I considered this diverse group size as 18, when it is 18, and I computed the diverse score and non-diverse score. And you can see the graph that uh, the diverse crowd, the blue one, always outperforms the non-diverse crowd. So, uh, while, yeah, there is, the diverse crowd is outperforming. How do you argue that this is a significant uh, gain? Significant gain. Okay. So, like statistically significant or like usefully significant? Both. Okay. I mean, I need to argue both of them really. Yeah. I think we have an next slide for yeah, that. Yeah, for, for that.
Oh, oh, we have it in the next slide. So this this is the Monte Carlo. So for answering your question and Dr. Shah's question, so this is the graph uh, where we uh, we did a Monte Carlo. We used Monte Carlo simulation. So this graph says that um, so this random groups we have generated. So we did like ten thousand random groups and we checked how many times the this uh, diverse crowd uh, formed the non-diverse. And you can see like most uh, from if you see, consider the graph from ten group size. 10 to 18 or 10 to 20. So it, it shows that consistently that diverse crowd outperformed non-diverse crowd. And you also got the results where the diverse crowd has 0 0.9. I mean, it has, I mean, it performed really well. Okay. Let me give you a little analogy or, you know, mindset and how you approach this way. Suppose um, you're predicting stock market. And suppose you saw, you can prove that your prediction is better than others by 1%. Compare that to the situation where you say you are predicting stock market and your uh, prediction is better in terms of the actual outcome by 1%. And the, that 1% gives you the uh, what you call uh, arbitrage. Then the second one is far, far, far superior in terms of you are making money than the first one, right? So it depends on how, from an application perspective, you are showing the value. Okay? And I, I, I want to see that kind of argument here. So I think yeah. that is this. So, so I didn't totally follow your reasoning, but it, um, I mean, basically in terms of the stock market, any, any, any small superiority of one method over another, can you can magnify your gains at, at, at scale. Um, is that what you're saying or? Well, yeah, so uh, again, I think it's important to, let's see if I can, one second. You are a little better than other mm -hmm. in terms of picking a stock. That has some value, but not a whole lot. But you are little better than others in terms of predicting actual market movement. Mm -hmm. That is far better value because I can actually put an arbitrage. Mm -hmm. uh, I can actually, you know, uh, for example, the stock invest in the stock of, right. you know, derivatives mm -hmm. that really play on the margins kind of thing. And I can, I can expand my value 10 times more or whatever, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So again, what measure are you going to pick in terms of wisdom of crowd mm -hmm. where, where, where you can put a bet and do far better than the rest? Yeah. That I'm trying to, you know, that I think is worth yeah. thinking about. So, so previous slides, you're missing the standard deviation here. That tells the right. statistical significant than what tell that one. You know, you can say in long term, you know, mm -hmm. statistically, you can get a 1% bet. Yeah. It's not a like random yeah. thing. So, so statistically, yeah. the results yeah. were significant. I think the bigger issue is whether or not the effect size is big enough to have any value to anyone in, in the real world. Um, but I would also, so I agree with what you're saying, but I would also add that this is the first pass at this approach. So one of the goals of the grant that's funding this work is to show that there is signal in the communication data, the tweets in this case, that can be mined to model the diversity of a group of people. And then once you have that, that quantitative measure of diversity, you can use that to purposefully select a diverse crowd that can outperform a non-diverse crowd. So that was just demonstrating that you could even get that effect, that you could do this, was, was one of the, the, the key findings. I mean, that's, that's not the point you're making in this talk, but that's, the, sure. that's one of the, the key findings. And, and that said, there are a range of methods that we have proposed to explore to modeling diversity. And so um, some of them were purely bottom up. So in our first pass at this, we used word to vec based approach. Um, and we basically clustered people in a 300 dimensional word to vec space. And we, um, and we selected our, our diverse groups um, based on that. This is another approach. But ultimately, we wanted to also employ sort of more top down driven approaches. So we know that um, people make their fantasy sports picks according to different strategies. So some people look at a player's recent injury, some people look at the quality of the upcoming um, competition. So, you know, if I've got a player on my team, how good is the defense of the team he's gonna be playing this week? And that'll decide whether or not I wanna pick him as captain. So people employ all sorts of different strategies just like we do in picking stocks. Um, mm -hmm. But so the, therein lies the argument, potential argument, that for example, if this can help you pick a better uh, team captain, as an example. Mm -hmm. The difference may be whatever it is. 
but you say that uh, you will pick a better team captain 10% of the time because of this. Now you can really quantify uh, the value and the impact of the play money. Mm -hmm. right? so and I, it becomes just very clear as compared to the statistical thing. That now gives, brings you the argument about better user you know, uh, yeah. uh, application. Yeah, no, this is that slide that 50% of more than 50% of time you're likely to pick better captain. Better captain. <coughs> so this so you, di you didn't present it in that sense. Right yeah, you didn't oh, present it as such. Yeah, but but because the, but but that is what is is planned to be conveyed on this slide that okay. if you have two groups, mm. more than 50% of chances are there for mm. this group to win. Like mm. Sometimes even 90% of chances are there for this no, group. No, you, you want to present this, you also present the p-value for oh. each point. P-value okay. is more than, yeah, most of the time, then they great. But p-value is it like that, you don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so I think the p-value for all these results is significant. So we ran a Mann-Whitney U-test for, for all these different group sizes. Um, and we got significant results. But this is just showing the result of the Monte Carlo simulation where for each crowd size, let's say crowd size 10, we, we created a whole bunch of diverse crowds and a whole bunch of non-diverse crowds. And what this is asking is, what is the chance that any given diverse crowd that you pull at random will outperform any given non-diverse crowd? And here this shows that, you know, it's a... 0.7. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, want, I, I want to give a message to you and hence to all the PhD students. That I didn't realize the, that extra thing that is very important. You said that is planned to be conveyed, but that was not conveyed. And, and that you guys get to be that need to be that discerning and convey, not plan to be conveyed, right? That's the difference. Uh, Based on what? Um, yep. that, that, that was my question to Shreyansh last time, and you still give me a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that is that, that question is planned to be answered by this proposal, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 for, for, for a physics experiment, I do yeah. not want diverse group. I actually want experts in that narrow area. Uh, so, so I think we can answer this question yeah. better. Yes. So, um, by the way, just, just some recommended reading. So, um, the guy whose research kind of spawned all this work on diversity is Scott Page. Um, he's a uh, professor at the University of Michigan. He's at the Santa Fe Institute. Um, and anyway, he has a book out called The Difference that kind of summarizes his body of work and talks about the different conditions in which you would, you would want a single expert versus, um, uh, versus a diverse group. Uh, one of the, the and, and also that is another planned study that we want to do. So. Um, in the context of fantasy sports, it's actually easy to figure out the expertise of a given fantasy sports player because you can see how they rank against their peers on the EnglishPremierLeague.com websites. You can actually experiment with selecting groups of, you, you could start by selecting um, a group of most expert users, and then you can begin to titrate in a diversity constraint, saying, okay, I want the most expert users, but I also want them to be as diverse as possible. And you can see and you can do a sort of surface plot where you have diversity on one axis and expertise on another. And the expectation is you would see sort of an interesting peak there where maybe the, uh, the, the crowd of the most experts actually isn't your best. You want a crowd that, is, that has expertise but also has some diversity. So that's the expectation. And, and this guy, Scott Page at Michigan, he had a famous paper published in PNAS in 2004 um, in which he basically modeled this effect and, and sort of documented the different conditions under which, um, as you add sort of diversity, you get groups that outperform the most expert groups. Yeah, you know, the po point I was trying to make uh, to Shreyansh earlier was that you can do whatever analysis, data analysis, mm -hmm. all that stuff, and you, you come up with some uh, outcome. Unless you can come up with a rational explanation, I won't be convinced that whatever you've done is repeatable. And so that's what we try to right. uh, eventually seek. And that's what you need to kind of present to the audience that, hey, this is probably the reason and whatever mathematics or whatever I did actually was trying to get at that that core. And, and because of that core, we can hope that this will pan out for other domains for mm. future. Co correct me if I'm wrong, but in for me, uh, the, the fact that you were able to avoid that line between D and E was a major uh, point, what was a major issue. 
that you take this approach of spectral thing and it will add you this noise. Basically, it's a noise. The line between D and E node, right, in the iteration. And this one did not add that, right? It constrained to what is in the data. That was an important thing, distinction between what is a standard technique used versus what innovation you have done. <laughs> right, but I, I think verbalizing that properly is, is to me, the core takeaway, I think. Uh, but uh, TK, uh, there's a picture here says it doesn't add and consistently would not add that kind of line that spectral guy would add. That is uh, as good as verbalizing it. So maybe maybe I that. didn't understand that point then. Do you want me to go back to it? Yeah, maybe we can do it uh, yeah. offline. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here is a conclusion in future work. Uh, co-training using clustering labels can achieve clustering consensus. So, uh, so, so I, I proved that the using clustering label, you can get the agreement uh, instead of using the uh, clustering uh, instead of using the clustering values. And then any clustering techniques for multi-view co-training can be used as far as it can provide accurate clustering labels. So the power iteration clustering that I used can be replaced by any existing clustering uh, techniques uh, until and unless it provides us a uh, clustering labels. Uh, and then uh, social media based diversity measure can enhance crowd wisdom from the application I just did that. And multiple diversity measures can further enhance crowd wisdom and both exploring other measures and combinations. So, I think, uh, you know, bad for us uh, really, uh, showing that number three that we actually have this kind of thing available social media to experiment is actually major way. Mm. Uh, mm. Because we'll create, we can create all kinds of different things from different uh, social media signals. Mm -hmm. right? and, uh, but there is unlimited amount of data available and situations available. Yeah. And the future work include a mathematically clean proof for showing that we can achieve consensus across all the views. Uh, for now we haven't, uh, we are still working on the proof and then uh, the last one is determining the number of clusters. So for now, my algorithm take uh, K as an input. So if you want to form K clusters, it will take as an input. But uh, in future, I was planning to have, uh, given a data set, I will only define how many clusters are, uh, will it, will the data set have? Uh, uh, you, I think you should, you should have a reason to make the efficiency argument also, although I didn't see it, what's your result? But I think that's true in the sense, I just don't have enough handle on uh, I, I thought you guys were claiming that the current uh, technique is, uh, you know... I think it's a yeah? novelty issue. It's it's a not novel contribution. It's not novel? No. So using other things. Other things are efficient. <laughs> then plug in, then the whole thing becomes efficient. Right? So that's what the, the initially mentioned, the PIC algorithm for special clustering. That's a kind of like a plug in. I think the... The, the most significant <coughs> contribution is the view updated to get to the convergence. Okay. But the efficiency that's is not a, in... Not a, the power iteration yeah. is being already there. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that has yeah. been there. Okay. Yeah, it's right. already been there. Oh. So that's the reason I... Oh, this is... Mm. Uh, and these are the references that I have uh, mentioned in the uh, presentations and uh, I will add more references in my thesis draft. Uh, and uh, yeah, and thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Shet, for giving this opportunity work here in Noises Lab and do thank you Dr. K.K. Chan for, uh, I mean it's great working with you and having a lot of inputs. Thank you Brad for <laughs> having a lot of uh, work on and especially thanks for Shreyans. If he's, if he's not here I would have done uh, my defense in uh, next fall. <laughs> <laughs> and a thanks, I would like to thank Sarasi and Vin. <laughs> I would like to thank Sarasi and Vin who gave the first opportunity to work with in Semantic Media Wiki and we also have published a paper and it also got identified and uh, there are people working on that paper and I got, uh, we also got the uh, citations for that paper. Thanks for that. Yeah. Citations by? Uh, Tim Berner, Tim Berner and his group actually. So his students are working on that. <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks for Rup Teja, Venkatesh, Nishita, Shalini who worked, helped me in this presentation. And they are here till last night, five, all the last three days. So thanks for them. <laughs> and thanks for Ankita and all of them. Uh, Ankita Swati for having this food here. And also Nishita. And one more thing. Thank you, Ellen. It's great working with you. And I have learned so many things from you. Thank you very much. So, uh, questions from the group? I have one question. So, Grilling, grilling.
<laughs> so this B which you are talking about, they can be on different Venware data world, right? Either it can be for friend follower network and right. based on the tweet mentioned. Right. And then again in the tweet mentioned it can be based on different topic right. like right, right. So is there any possibility or is it at all meaningful to have some relationships between the views? For an example, hierarchical clustering, right? It, it clusters in a way, in, in a hierarchical way. So first, does it make sense to have some kind of uh, dep relational dependencies between two views? Second, is that all possible to incorporate something like that, not only on your work, in general, this multi-view uh, code training work? Okay, so the proposed framework can, uh, so we have proposed a framework uh, where you can experiment with uh, different views. Uh, so I, in, in my example, I have considered the players view and the team view. But if you wanted to consider some other uh, views, uh, you can consider those particular views and experiment on these uh, by using this framework. So that's th that's the answer for your first question. And what was the second one again? No, even my first question was on, is there a possibility of, of defining some dependencies between two views? So in a hierarchical clustering, so we start with some and then we divide uh, a single cluster. So example, tweet so. and then the mentioning of uh, players in the tweet and mentioning of players in the uh, mentioning of team in the tweets. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. some dependency between the, between the two. I mean, I know you haven't, that, that is not the focus of your work, but I'm just asking whether is it something interesting to do or is it something that all useful to do? Yeah, it is interesting to do that kind of work, but uh, for uh, for now, I have considered the yeah, yeah. views. Yes, go ahead. I have a much more, much simpler question. Um, so hey guys, before before you go, I hope you guys all know, uh, Matt uh, oh, yeah. got that uh, Google uh, award, right? I, that's a big deal, man. So uh, learn from that uh, and take that as inspiration. I want more of our group to try it out, whether you win it or not. Right? So I said it's a big deal. Let's say uh, uh, congratulations, Matt, once again. Just very simple question for my for my own benefit. Um, similarity kernels. That when you get the result, do you normalize the distances to the unit interval? Yeah, it's between zero and one. Okay, thank you. I have a, a question. I wonder whether this will lead to, you know, this is a noise or useless or it is something interesting. So, could I use domain knowledge? I, there exists a knowledge base that says there is all these teams, they are here. I mean, you have a knowledge whether uh, these users who talk about this team actually reside in that, um, you know, uh, geographic area, that metro area where the team is based. Meaning that there exists uh, um, information that is not uh, directly in the data that you utilize, but it is in the metadata or it is an external knowledge. The metadata could be the profile information, which gives you additional data that the user does not give directly through the content. All the knowledge is available through the fact that um, I go to the uh, uh, non non fantasy football, the real world football, and see what exactly you know what is the team composition, where is the team base, where they are playing, because people get the idea uh, from the real world to map into playing the fantasy world. They, they, this is somehow tied to the real world thing. So I have a knowledge base of, uh, you know, the teams uh, and their positions and their plays and their historical statistics of the things and who is ascending player and all the things. I may even have a knowledge of uh, what uh, people are voting in the actual, uh, you know, uh, the, the expo, uh, the, the, there's a, you know, Let's say there's high spend trophies, people go vote for that, right? So I may have knowledge of those kind of stuff that is going on. So could I exploit that? And yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. I mean, so when are there you have been, so to answer your question, there have been work which consider this kind of affinities along with the other user profile information. Mm. 
and try to do clustering based so, on that. But what but, I would like to see yeah, is yeah. not just the affinity. I like to see it in a structured approach where I say I have a knowledge graph. Whichever you define knowledge graph. I, I have been doing that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Could you use it to um, increase, improve the diversity of the clusters? You can do that too, yeah. A bias with the background knowledge. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you needed to rank the views first. Right. <laughs> then cut Actually, out the sound view, yeah. mm. use this, and then give the weight of what you, mm. then mm. you do this. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you very much. So,